Hello, welcome back. I've got delicious Creo brew today. This is the Ghana Light Roast. It's very chocolatey. It's very much like hot chocolate. It's so good. Yum. So yeah, as you come in, be sure to say hello so that I can welcome you. And I'm kind of excited to talk about this today. I haven't made a video about creating a meal plan in well over a year. So I think it's about time we talked about it again. <laughs> and I'm actually thinking about making an official video on it again too. So yeah, I really am excited about this subject today. All right. Let's see who is here. Rosie Osalis is here, Jennifer Angus, Brandy C, hello. Teresa, Keto Fat Girl No More is here. Thank you for being here. She's my, she's one of my moderators, live chat moderators. Keto Queen, welcome. Love Omad, welcome from Canada. Xandra Crisp, hello. Epiphany London, hello. I'm so glad to see you. All right, welcome everybody. Okay, so while we're still waiting for a few people to show up, because I usually don't like talking about my subject until I have at least 20-ish people, I'm going to give you guys, since you're here early, you're the early lucky people, I'm going to give you guys an update on how I'm feeling since the weigh-in on Sunday. So I know a lot of you have been a little concerned about me because I was a little bit stressed out. Well, I seemed stressed out. I really wasn't stressed out. It was more anxiety than anything and I'm kind of gotten a handle on it now and I've really been reading everybody's comments thinking about everybody's advice really evaluating why I chose to eat the foods that I did and um, how I'm feeling about going forward with the foods that the food choices that I have chosen to eat for maintenance and I really am feeling confident that I made the right choices and that it's just something weird with water weight. I am going to press forward. Now, maybe people don't agree with me on eating the packaged things like bars and peanuts and things like that. But see, here's the thing. During the time where I'm doing fat loss macros, um, part of the thing that keeps me going is knowing that when I reach my goal, I will be able to have treats. And so like, to me, those keto treats like nuts and the bars and the keto cakes, things like that, are kind of a reward for my hard work and basically preventative from keeping me from going off the rails during stressful times. So if I'm already programmed to turn to those kind of things when I'm stressed out or when things are really busy or when I don't have time to grab food, you know, things like that, if I'm already programming myself that that's what I do, then in a really bad disaster, I'm going to turn to those things first versus really bad carb things that are just going to throw me completely out of whack. So does that make sense? So now that I've had time to really sit and think about it and evaluate it, I have decided I'm going to go ahead and press forward with the plan that I have set out. I'm pretty comfortable now with my meal amounts and my calorie amounts and I really really feel like it's just water weight that I am dealing with because I am doing some sort of dietary change. Now I'm trying to keep my schedule still in the intermittent fasting window. So I had a couple of people say you should do intermittent fasting. Well technically I'm still doing intermittent fasting and spacing my meals out for muscle protein synthesis. I'm just doing it more often. So right now what I am doing is having my first meal around um, noon, noon to one o'clock, my second meal around four, and my third meal around eight. So I'm still keeping in my um, eating window and I'm still keeping my meals separated and I'm still making sure I have 30 grams of protein per meal to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So I really did think it out and I really did plan it the way I did it for a reason. I'm not just kind of like, eating random things willy-nilly. I like researched the products that I wanted to use. I bought the ones I wanted. I really am happy with my choices. And so I've decided I'm going to press forward. We shall see what happens. I hope that nobody like abandons ship and says Tamara's crazy and runs away because I 
decided that's what I'm going to do. Um, I know there's a lot of people that don't agree with doing packaged foods, and I get that, and I, that's okay. But it's what I want to try just, just to see if it can work for me because I know that it's a little bit more sustainable with my crazy dance mom life. <laughs> so I can't always stand to do only two meals a day. And I can't always stand to just eat whole foods. And I can for a time and I have for a really long time. But I, when I went off and did Lazy Keto before, this is the stuff I ate before. It's just I tried to make a little bit more conscientious choices this time, and I'm tracking it to really pay attention this time, whereas I basically did what I wanted the last few times I did it, and I still lost weight. So I'm not super worried about it, and I don't really want to lose weight. My goal is to stop losing weight. It's to see if I can stop. So... If I'm still in the 170s or even the early 180s, not the 190s, by the end of this, I'll be happy. If I creep up to the 190s, you may hear me saying, singing a different tune in a few weeks. But anyway, that's my update. I've decided I'm going to press forward with my plan and I'm not going to let the scale rule me. I'm going to trust that I make good choices and that the foods that I'm eating are what I planned to eat and should eat and I'm going to go ahead and do it. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> so check in with me again, of course, next week and see how the weigh-in goes. But as long as it's not dra drastically jumping, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be chill with that. Okay, so we have 22 people here, and 20 well, two is my lucky number, and 22 is double luck. So we are gonna get started. Um, keto meal plan. So I went back and I was looking at some of my older videos and I realized someone had actually watched it recently. I have a keto meal plan video. I made it well over a year ago. I was still associated with ketogenic dieters back then and the video was for the people on ketogenic dieters. So you'll see that I'm quite a bit larger there. And it's kind of a long video because in the video I actually make a meal plan with you. So if you want to go a lot more in depth on this, I'm just going to give you the basic rundown of steps. But if you want to see me actually putting one together and see what that's like, go to the Mentor Mondays playlist. You'll see I had a whole bunch of videos that I made for ketogenic dieters. All of them are going to point you to ketogenic dieters. I don't, I no longer recommend that. I mean, you can go there if you want at your own risk. But anyway, I'm no longer associated with them. Honey, I can't give you your blanket right now because I'm doing my live chat. You're going to have to wait till I'm done. I'm so sorry. Got to love three-year-olds. He's not going to be happy about that. <sighs> okay. So if you want to watch a video on how to do this in depth, go ahead and check that out. Um, it's very relevant still. There's nothing in there that isn't relevant. In fact, I found it to be quite thorough. And I don't really want to be thorough with this video. I just want to give you the basic steps. So... First step, you're going to need an actual pen and paper. Jasper, if you ruin my live chat by crying, you're going to be in big trouble when I get finished. Go downstairs. I understand that you want your blanket. I love you, and I will give you your blanket as soon as we are done. Oh, my gosh. He is seriously going to try and jeopardize my chat by sitting there crying as loud as he can. Don't even mess with me, kiddo. Okay. Starting over. <laughs> you need an actual paper and pen for this. You're not going to want to just stick this in your phone. You're going to want to actually take a pen to paper and really think about it. And so you're going to want to have your first page is going to be like your favorite protein sources. So the very first step is to write down all of your favorites. This is the reason that packaged food plans. And this is what's brought this up. Okay. So on my Facebook group recently, someone mentioned, I, I'm not even going to mention the name of this company because I'm so irritated by it, but someone mentioned that they were doing this type of keto. And so I Googled it to find out what it was and was very chagrined to see that it was a very cheap and easy <laughs> clickbait keto meal plan. It was basically like, let us do all the work for you. You won't have to track. You won't have to do this. No hard work for you. No hard work. It's super fast. Pay us $39 and we'll give you everything you need to be successful. Well, number one, that's just bunk. You don't need to pay anyone money, 39 bucks to tell you what to eat. Because 
a package meal plan isn't going to be anything that's helpful to you at all because it's going to be random foods that maybe you don't even like. I just don't see how that kind of thing can be helpful. But when we started researching this person, this guy who has put out this thing, he's apparently done it multiple times. So he will pull in a whole bunch of people to a Facebook group that I hear is supposedly so supportive and really, really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has multiple of them because he'll en end up getting a lot of people saying he's a scam artist and all of this stuff. And then he has to shut it down and start over. His personal page is filled with money-making schemes and all kinds of ridiculousness. He does not care about the keto community. He does not, he's not even skinny. He is totally fat. He obviously doesn't do keto himself. He literally knows nothing. He is just selling stuff he stole off the internet or got from certain places and said, here you go. This, you, you wasted your money. Waste, waste, waste of money. And I was really irritated that this person was posting in my group. <clears throat> and then they started private message my members trying to get them to join this company this pay for this ridiculous plan which really ticked me off I have to say because I'm sorry you don't mess with my people you don't mess with my people I love my people I take care of my people and I teach my people to be smart okay and if, if they're telling you $39 is going to give you everything you need to be successful and then you won't have to put any work in they are lying to you lying it's not hard to put the work in Okay, so write my proteins. So this is how you do it. Write proteins at the top. Proteins. My bad handwriting right now. Okay, list all your favorites. Chicken, fish, pork, beef, cheese, yogurt, nuts. You name it, you list it. Anything that is a protein that you like to eat, put it on the list. Okay, that's the list you're going to pull from when you're making your plan. On the next page, you're going to want to put all of your favorite low-carb veggies. So some of my favorites, um, zucchini, spaghetti squash, broccoli, um, cabbage, spinach, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, you name it. If you like it, it's a low-carb veggie. You got a list. You want to make a list of that, okay? So once you have your proteins down and then you have your veggies down, you can start. But what you need is you have to have some kind of tracking app for your phone. And this is the reason why you want to write it, because you want to be using your phone to be tracking it. So you're just going to decide, do I want to eat two meals? Do I want to eat three meals? So the third step is how many meals am I going to eat? Okay, am I going to do intermittent fasting or if I'm going to wait? Am I going to space it out through the whole day or am I going to have a window? You got to decide that for yourself. When I first started keto, I did three meals and I didn't put them in an eating window. So I ate breakfast around 9 a.m. I had lunch around 1 p.m. and I had dinner pretty late. I've always had dinner pretty late, as you guys well know. I've been, a lot of people say, don't you eat too late to lose weight? Well, obviously not. Uh, yeah, no, obviously that's not an issue for me. I eat late all the time because of my schedule. And after about four weeks of cooking three meals a day, I kind of, got tired of that. And then that's when I started becoming fat adapted. I didn't really feel like I needed that first meal. And that's when I started doing intermittent fasting with the two meals at about noon and eight ish PM. I don't, I don't really like, I'm not super strict about it. I just try and keep it, you know, within a window of 15 hours of fasting, usually 15 to 16 hours of fasting is what I try and do. So you need to decide what you want to do. Once you do, then you're going to, your next page is going to be like day one, meal one, and then meal two, and then meal three. And then you're going to take your macros. Now, if you don't have macros, you can get macros from my Facebook group. If you don't want to join my Facebook group, you can email me at ketochaos at gmail.com and I'll give you my macros chart. There are a lot of macros charts out there. Um, you can get custom macros from the calculator at ketogains.com. Um, I prefer the higher protein, um, moderate fat way because you lose body fat faster and it's more satiating to me. But you can do it however you want. If you wanna take your um, calorie number and your, your ratio, you can still do it that way with any kind of keto. But if you want to do it the way I'm doing it, get my macros chart and then divide the protein number. So that protein is the most important out of all three of the numbers. Divide your protein number into three or two, whichever way you're planning to do it. 
I like to keep it pretty even. If you like to have a really heavy breakfast and then a lighter dinner, you can divide it that way. If you like, if you like to have a really heavy dinner, vice versa, you can divide it that way. Decide how much protein grams you want per meal and write it next to meal one. So my, mine, I do two meals, and so my meal one would say 60 protein, and my meal two would say 60 protein. Then decide, okay, what do I want to eat for my protein? Everyone knows what I eat for my first meal. You do not have to eat breakfast foods, but I like to. So for my first meal, if I'm doing my fat loss macros and I'm doing it exactly how I usually do it, I do two eggs, 40 grams of center cut bacon. We all know this. You heard me say it a million times. T two ounces of cheese usually, sometimes one, just depending on the day. One ounce of cheese, two ounces of cheese, and a cup of yogurt. Those are the proteins that I choose to use. And I, what you do is you take your chronometer app or whatever tracking app that you are using and you start plugging your proteins into the app until you get to 60 grams of protein, okay? You're gonna do that for all three meals, and then you're gonna wanna add in your veggies if you want them for all three meals, okay? Once you have those done, how you like them, and your carbs are under 20, so you just make sure your carbs stay under 20 when you're adding those veggies in, you're gonna wanna look at the fats, and that's where it gets kind of tricky. So if you put everything that you're planning to eat in and you realize your fats are like way high, then you're going to want to go back in and say, okay, is there a leaner meat that I could have eaten for lunch that could bring my fat macro down? Or could I add a zero fat item like shrimp or tuna? I mean, tuna is not zero, but it's like pretty close. Like something that really lean. Can I add that in and take some of the fatty meat out? Could I add in a yogurt and take some of the fatty meat out? Until you get your perfect day that lines up with your perfect macros, okay? When you have that first day done, you've done it. So then you do day two, day three, day four, all the way a whole week if you really want to, and then go out grocery shopping for that. So you write down everything you need for those meals for the week, go out grocery shop, and then you, you're you done. You don't have to think about it ever again. If you just take the time to sit down and really put it together, you'll get a handle on it. And once you have a week done, you don't ever have to do that again because you'll know oh, I need six ounces of chicken for whatever meal that I usually have. You know, you'll just know. And so then you can track it as you go, like I do. I track mine one meal at a time because I know in my mind how much each thing is, how much protein is in each thing. I know that most of my eggs have about six grams or seven grams of protein. So I know if I add two eggs, it's 14 or whatever. You know, like I just already know what I normally eat. And so once you do that seven days and you follow that full seven days, by the time you get to the end of the seven days, you'll have a handle on it. Like it's easy. You do not need to pay anybody to do this for you. And if you do pay someone to do it for you, then they should go based on what your taste are. So it should be someone, I think like Mind Your Macros might do it that way. I'm not 100% sure. But like, I think you send your favorite foods and she writes you a, a macros centric plan based on what you like to eat, I think. I could be wrong about that, Misty. I hope I'm not wrong, but Misty is another ketogenic dieter who was <clears throat> not so lovely removed from the group. So I'm happy to support her business now. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, gotta love it. Anyway, so yeah, mindyourmacros.com I think is hers if you wanna check it out and pay somebody to do, do a meal plan. Um, I personally will not ever probably be doing meal plans for people. And the reason why is because technically it's not legal, at least I think here. It's not, unless you're a nutritionist, okay? And I don't want to become a nutritionist. I don't care about that enough. My goal is to teach people how to do things themselves so they don't need other people to help them. So when I'm doing personal coaching, what I'm more doing is giving number one, accountability, number two, emotional support, and number three, ideas on how to avoid binging or falling off the wagon and that kind of thing. Um, I have like a Marco Polo app and you message me and I message you back. It's kind of like texting with voice. And that's what I do with my coaching. I don't really give out these specific things or what you should do. Does that make sense? So anyway, that's how you do it. Does anybody have any questions about making a plan? Did that make, was that clear? Um, of course, if not, you can go back and watch me make a full plan on that other video in the Mentors Mon Mentor Mondays playlist, which is still available. 
But I thought, man, it has been a really long time since I've talked about this. And this is a necessary piece to being successful on keto is really getting a handle on tracking. And getting a handle on tracking means putting the work in and deciding what you're going to eat before you eat it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to see if you guys have questions. So this is a good time. And I'm going to say hello to a few more people because I think I missed quite a few. You. Rachel Devenish, welcome. CE816, hello. Kelly Smith, hello. Luz Diaz, good morning. Uh, Andrea S. Oh man. Yeah, you guys need keto cakes in your community. Tell them to come. But you know, we have all been telling them to come and they they don't they can't figure out the shipping thing. It's hard to ship cupcakes. It is not easy. <laughs> Ah, oh, Tammy Hinckley is here. I'm sorry you didn't get the notifications. You're here now. Hey, Vincent's here. Barry Vincent. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Terry James Jameson. Uh, Lloyd Martin. Who else is here? Renee Bergman. Pamela E. Lloyd Martin. Hello. All right. And Zandra, you said that this is very clear and it helps you out. Awesome. You watched all my videos? Every single one? I don't think that that's craziness. I hope you haven't watched every single one because there's like 356, I think. I think this is number 356, maybe 357. That's a lot of videos. All right. I don't see any questions, guys. If you guys don't give me questions, then we'll be done and we can just call this a 20 minute chat. <laughs> I don't know. I could probably think about something else to talk about. Uh, Rachel Devinish says she got a keto cake. Which flavors did you get, Rachel? I, my favorite that they have ever made out of all the ones I've tried so far was the cookie one, the um, sugar cookie. Oh my gosh. That one is divine. That literally tastes like eating a sugar cookie. But see, the thing about them is, is like, I, I don't feel like I could binge on them. I feel like one is more than enough. And maybe it's just so many years without having sugar in my in my life. Like, uh, I don't know. I just feel like they're really super sweet and they hit the spot, but they're almost too much. Does that make sense? So like, yeah, eating one a day is like way a lot. Um, the other company, keepingitketocakes.com. Actually, I kind of like theirs more. Their cake is a little bit more spongy and their frostings are a little like more low key and they tend to do two frostings. So they'll have like a cream on the inside of the cake, almost like a Twinkie. They taste a lot like a Twinkie and the top will have some other kind of frosting. So um, is there a recipe for keto cake? Yes, there's tons of recipes for keto cake out there. They're basically um, almond flour, coconut flour, monk fruit, erythritol, egg, cream cheese, heavy whipping cream. Those are the types of ingredients that go into them. They are obviously not something that you're going to want to eat if you're trying to lose fat. Uh, honestly, they will derail your fat loss because they are about 30 grams. The ones I eat are about 30 grams of 30 to 35 of fat, eight grams of protein. And I think two to three net carbs for almost every single one. I think I've ever had one that was four. So they're fantastic macro wise, but if you're trying to lose fat, you're basically consuming a lot of fat in one, you know, dessert. So they really are something that if you're trying to lose weight, you're going to want to reserve those for special days. Um, I'm eating one a day right now because literally trying to not lose weight. Okay. I am trying to stop. Basically, I want to get a handle on stopping so that when I get to my goal weight, I don't go too far and I don't get too thin. I already don't love my face. I already think my face is too thin. It's driving me batty, actually. It's, I actually think now that I'm retaining some water that it's actually a little bit more full. But the last couple of weeks, I felt very pinched and like old looking. I know I don't look old in here, but that's because I swear YouTube has a filter. It doesn't show my wrinkles that much. I mean, it's also my lighting. I have good lighting. You can see in some of my other videos, I don't look this amazing all the time. <laughs> all right. Oh, and you guys can see that my face is not swollen as bad. You, It kind of is right here a little. 
If you saw my last Tammy's Tidbits at the very end, if you made it to the end, which if you made it to the end, you are a rock star. That was a long video. That was a really long video. I was like, whoa, there's a lot in this one. And it's a lot of fun stuff. There is some good stuff in that video. Oh my gosh, if you guys make it to the end, but you will see that after last week's live chat, so if you guys were here last week, I was chat, chat, chatting, and then I started thinking I saw blood on my lips. I did. I actually, after the chat, I went in the bathroom and I realized I had dried blood on my lips because I had just gotten these on and the back one was tearing my, my cheek apart, like ripping it up. And so by like the next day, by the afternoon, my face was like swollen. I looked like somebody had punched me in the face. And so, yeah, that was not fun. And I, I got it kind of fixed and I wore wax on it a lot and now it's finally healing up. It's still sore today a little bit right here and it's still a tiny bit swollen through there, but it's getting better. I was like thinking I am taking these off. This is not worth it. I have to be able to talk and I couldn't talk. Whenever I would talk, I would taste blood like for like four days and I was like, this is not going to work for me. As you guys know, I talk a lot, even in real life. <laughs> I bet you can't imagine. And it was killing me. I'm like, I can't talk. I w and I looked so funny. And, oh, it was awful. So, yeah, there will be more about that, of course, in the next Tammy's Tidbits. That'll be at the beginning of that one where I give the updates every day on, like, how I'm doing with that. But today is better. Today is better. I was so relieved because I was thinking, oh my gosh, what if this doesn't get better by next week and I have to do my live chat and talk for an hour with this again. And But it's it's a lot better. So thank you if you made it to the end of that video. And to the person who complimented Jasper and the chicken wrangling, I appreciate it because that's literally my favorite thing of the entire video was Jasper ch catching those chickens by their tails and hauling them. Oh my gosh, I could not stop laughing. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I just am putting one of uh, the big long video of that on hide and seek this morning. And it's also a really long one. So people probably won't make it through it and they won't even see the chickens. <sighs> but it's hilarious. Like it's hilarious. Unless you really love chickens and you're feeling sorry for them because he's literally yanking them up by their tail feathers. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back and see what you guys are talking about. Oh, I love it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tammy Hinkley says, I have watched all your videos, but not all at once. I started watching pretty close to the beginning and binge watched to catch up and now have caught up weekly. Really? Wow. You are like the queen. That is amazing. <sighs> I, I, I haven't done that on anybody's channel. Not even my favorite people. So that's that's awesome. And it makes me laugh because if you guys go back and watch some of my first videos, you will laugh because I did not know what I was doing. Why does it keep going out of focus? Stop it. Stop. Okay, Terry Jameson says, I'm trying to put my mom on keto, but it's not sinking in. What do I do? Love her. You can't force someone to do it. They have to be inspired to do it. And as painful as it is, especially being as a daughter, watching our parents be ill and not taking care of themselves, there's literally nothing we can do. First of all, she's your mom. So you don't really have like authority to like tell her what to do. If she were really aged and you were taking care of her and you were in charge of all of her food, Maybe, but because she's your mother, you have to give her the respect of the fact that she's your mother. The only thing you can do is share articles with her, share my videos, share things with her that you think might inspire her to try it and tell her you'll do it with her or whatever. The only way you can do it is just like with, with, a, with a spouse, you can't force your husband to do it either. You can't force your wife to do it either. You have, they have to want to do it because, and this is the reason, because keto requires a dedication that's pretty strong to not eating any kind of carbs. And if you're trying to force someone to do it, they're going to sneak them. And so it's not going to be successful. They'll just sneak them behind your back. You can't control other people as much as we love to. Everyone has their agency to choose for themselves what they want to do. This is the main reason why I haven't actually put my whole family on keto. I would love to have them all eating keto. I feel like it would be beneficial to all of them, especially my little girls. 
they did try it one day each and they had fun, but they were like well happy to go back to doing um, their regular diet the next day. The thought of giving up gummy worms forever was too much for them to contain. And I know that if I tried to force them to do it, even as their mom, they would sneak it. And I have a friend whose mother has type 2 diabetes. And my friend has lost over 100 pounds doing this, doing keto, has set a great example for her mother, has encouraged her mother, and has tried to help her mother by taking away some of her favorite foods because they are kind of in control of her diet a bit because my friend takes her to doctor's visits and everything and the doctor keeps telling her you can only have this and you can only have that. She needs to be on keto, but she won't. And she sneaks it. She still sneaks it. She tries to kill herself every single day. And there's, it's, it's heartbreak. It's heartbreaking. And it's hard to watch. But we just have to remember that we don't have control of other people. And the only thing we can do is try to inspire them and encourage them and support them. And that's kind of what I do with this channel. And that's why when people I teach or coach or mentor or friends if they fall off the wagon, I don't like beat them up or give them a hard time or even feel bad. I, I feel bad for them because I see where their struggle and I see them regain and and I feel sorry for them. But I don't judge them. I get it. I totally have been there. I have lost 110 pounds and gained back 150 and know how horrible that is. So I have a lot of empathy and I just keep on trying to set the best example that I can. And that's part of what keeps me very focused because I know there's a lot of you guys that are watching me and that if I fell off the wagon, you would probably lose all hope that it was possible. And so that is extremely motivating to me to keep me moving forward and to keep me trying to make this easy for you guys and understandable and make you guys know that's the whole point of this video talking about making the list because I want you guys to know that you can do this yourselves. You don't need anyone else. You can choose to have someone else if you want help and motivation and accountability, but you do not need any help. You can do it yourself. And the only thing we can do is try and inspire the best we can. I hope that helps, son. I'm sorry that it's, I'm sure it's not a fun situation. <laughs> I'd love to see my dad on keto. My mom is pretty much on keto, but she had um, bariatric surgery. And so that's kind of what they, what they do anyway, when you have, um, bypass is they get you to do keto. So she's all, she was already kind of keto before I was keto and she's very supportive of me and my sister and my brother. Now my brother is also doing it. And I, I just feel like I just set a good example and they kind of came along. I didn't, I didn't tell any of them to do it. And I have other siblings that I think would really benefit from it, but I don't like sit and judge them and think, oh, you should be doing that. I can't. I just can't because I know what it's like. You have to be in a certain mindset to be willing to try it. And the hard part is that we on the other side know that it only takes a couple of weeks before you realize the miracle that it is and how easy it is, right? It's so hard watching people on the other side feel so overwhelmed by the thought and know that really it's not as hard as it seems. And try and convince them of that is really, really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Okay. So Rachel tried the Mountain Dew Citrus, the banana, the strawberry shortcake, peanut butter chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, those, yeah, all of those are not my favorite. I don't think, I don't love the banana, but I'm not a banana fan. The Mountain Dew was just okay. The cookie dough one's pretty decent, but I'd rather just eat the cookie dough on top and not the cake. Their cakes are really, they're not spongy. And I really prefer the spongy ones, but I don't know. They're good. All right. Yes. So, Xandra, were you the one who watched that video and told me thank you for that video for the, for the, um, so this is video is because of you. Because it was, I was like, someone said, they watched my meal plan video and it was like really good and helpful. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I haven't talked about that in forever. So thank you for bringing it up. That's awesome. <laughs> and you can ask me a million questions. I don't mind. I try really hard to respond to questions. So I don't always get to saying thank you for the compliments super fast. But if I see a question, I tried really, really hard to answer them in the comments as much as I can. 
I really want you guys to know that I'm a teacher and a mentor for each and every one of you. If you have a question, please ask. Please ask. I will do everything in my power to respond as quickly as I can. Um, when you fast, can you drink Mio in your water? Yes. It's zero calorie. It will not break your fast. Um, I even do... I even do, like today, I have my Creo Brew. I don't know, maybe it's not the best choice, but I still I still do sometimes Creo Brew with um, half and half. And I only do a couple tablespoons of half and half. And I drink it. I haven't eaten my first meal. And I've always kind of done that when I felt hungry. Um, I also drink one of these. And that won't kick you either. This is what I normally do. A bang or a monster or rock star. Some kind of energy. Because I don't do coffee. And I do like to have some caffeine. And I, at first I didn't. But I have gotten over my caffeine fears. I used to think energy drinks were so bad for you. I used to think a lot of things were so bad for you. Salt, fat, caffeine. I don't know. Like my, my definitely my... My feelings about things have changed. Oh, artificial sweeteners. I used to think they were all going to kill you. I don't feel that way anymore, obviously. Um, I feel like this diet has to be sustainable, okay? If you're going to do this, it's really a lifetime thing. I, if you go off of it, you will regain. That is just the long and short of it right there. You will regain because as much as you have control over your carbs for a certain amount of time and you feel like you have a handle on it, eventually you will go hog wild crazy if you have a carb addiction and binge. And then you'll be depressed because you binged and you'll binge again. And then you'll be depressed because you gained weight and you'll binge again. And it's just this, at least for me, vicious cycle of killing myself over and over and over. So I just cannot do carbs ever again. And if that means I drink a lot of soda, a diet soda, and it maybe it's going to put me in an early grave, well, being fat is going to put me in an early grave faster. That's I have to look at it like that. Like if it makes it sustainable and it makes it my my calorie level lower and my longevity, my life longevity higher because I was able to keep my calories lower because we all know a low calorie diet will make you live longer. Yeah, it's worth it to me. So I, that's what I do on my fast. Usually in the morning, I'll get up and have some kind of caffeine, zero calorie something. Um, then if I feel like I'm still really hungry, I will probably usually do a Creole brew with half and half. I don't always do heavy whipping cream because it's got too many calories. You want to be below 50. There are people that will argue about that, but you want to be below 50 calories. Um, you could even do maybe a sugar-free jello if you were really dying. But honestly, if you're really dying, just move your window up. So if you're if you're hungry at 10 a.m., just eat at 10 a.m. and then don't eat again. You know, eat earlier your other meal and then try doing that window for a while. Um, I'm not a hard and fast intermittent faster. I feel like if I'm really, really hungry, well, first of all, if I'm really, really hungry, I probably low in my sodium and I always take some sole water first. Number one, always. If I'm thirsty or hungry, I always eat salt first because it's usually my first symptom, especially dry lips. If I have dry lips, I'm, I know I'm way low on sodium. So I'll always pack in the sodium first. If I don't feel better, or less hungry in 15, 20 minutes than I know it's true hunger signal. And of course, I've already tried bang because I drank that with my sodium. <laughs> and then I'll have a Creole brew if I really want to push my time out. Um, but most of the time I have my Creole brew with my meal. And most of the time I'm not hungry before my meal. And my meal is anywhere between noon and three o'clock, depending on the day, my first meal. It just depends on how busy we were with homeschool and you know, like my, like on Tuesday, like I, I don't necessarily get to eat as soon because I get up and I have to get online and, um, get my kid. Well, first of all, get my kids up, get my kids dressed, get them eating breakfast, tell them to get started on their schoolwork before they should be working on their schoolwork while I'm doing this, but they don't, you know, they don't. Okay. Well, sometimes they do. So after this, I have to go and I only have two hours to get all the homeschooling done and eat and get ready for my own, my clogging class before we have to leave. We, we leave the house at two 30. And so Tuesdays are tight. We don't always get everything done. All the homeschooling does not usually get done. Sometimes we get some math and a little reading done on Tuesdays. That's about it. So I don't always get to eat right away. And so on Tuesdays, I tend to eat probably around 1.30 and then again at 
4 35 o'clock at the dance studio so this is right now while i'm doing my maintenance if i were not doing maintenance i would get a 1 30 and then when i got home around 9 30 or whatever 9 9 30 and the only difference is now i'm throwing an extra meal in between with my maintenance calories that's how i decided i was going to do it because i just felt like that was the way my brain would work and i was right it is very doable it's satisfying for me now, obviously, the scale going up, so we don't know for sure exactly what's going on with that. There's so many things it could be that I'm not worrying about it because I really feel like this is going to work. I really, really, really feel like this is going to work. I don't think my diet is too calorie heavy, but we shall see. <laughs> if after three months I have put on 10 pounds, well, I may be eating my words, but you know what? Then I will just lose that 10 pounds again. It's okay. I'm not worried about it anymore. Other than, I mean, I hope I, you guys don't think I'm crazy and I, I worry about what you guys think a lot because I want to be inspiring to you. I don't want you guys to be like, oh, Tamara's lost it. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Love, Love Omad has a good question about that subject. So let's just read that one. I am 20 pounds away from my goal weight. I am concerned about maintaining. Do I go about five pounds below my weight goal in order to maintain my weight at goal? That is such a good question and I wish I knew the answer because that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. So I got down to 176 before I started my maintenance calories. Um, in the last three weeks, I've put seven pounds back on. Actually, well, yesterday I was still 183.6. So that's what? Is that seven? Yeah, because I was 176.4. About seven pounds. I truly believe it's water weight, but it has caused me to grow around the middle and I feel chubbier than I did at 176. I don't feel as comfortable and I don't, I'm still fitting in my clothes, but I am feeling a little bit pudgier, though I like how my face looks. So, I mean, how do you decide? Um, but I really believe that that's water weight. I don't believe I'm putting on fat at this point. So if you really want to keep it that way, I mean, it might be a good idea to go five pounds below. Honestly, I don't know that I would dare if, it depends on what your goal weight is. So my goal weight is actually a body fat percentage. My goal weight is 27% body fat. I don't really want to go lower than that. I don't like already, I feel like my face is too thin. And I know if I go lower than that, it's going to be worse. And I don't like how I look all pinched up. I like being soft and I keep losing in my face and it's irritating. I just want to lose in my gut. I really understand people who go in and have lipo now because it's like you cannot control where you lose a weight from. And I would prefer not to lose any more weight in my face. That's how I feel. So it's a crapshoot for me right now. It's a crapshoot. I don't really know. I do know that maintenance is harder than weight loss by a huge amount. So I have several people who got there before me. I have two moderators on my Facebook group. So if you want to join my Facebook Facebook group and ask them how they feel about that, be a good idea. Karen Marie is one of them. Michelle Pottle is the other one. Um, and then I have my sister who's also a moderator, Angela Galloway. She reached her goal weight and then has re had a 15 pound regain. So she might be willing to talk to you about that and what caused that. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really gotten to my goal yet. So I don't really know for sure, which is why I'm kind of practicing right now. Cause I want to see if I can just stay in one spot for a period of time. But last time I did this, so last year I did this last year too. I went back and looked. And if you look at my meal plans from last year, you'll be like, Whoa, she ate a lot of crap. And I ate a lot of crap and it, that's why I was really careful about the things I chose this time because I didn't want to just r eat random crap. I didn't eat carbs, but I ate a lot of bars and nuts and things like that. And I still kind of lost weight. And so that's, that's why I think what was throwing me off this time is if you watch my weigh-ins, I did lose some weight. But the thing is, is, I was losing a lot more weight than what was showing on the scale. And I didn't know it because I was retaining water. So that's what makes me go, okay, I don't need to stress because I'm not dropping weight and that's the goal. And I did retain water last time I did this because in June, when I went back on my fat loss macros, I lost 20 pounds in a month.
and there's no way I lost 20 pounds of fat. Guaranteed, I was holding on to a crap ton of water during those three months that I was eating that extra, those extra foods and eating the bars. My body was retaining water. I didn't realize how much weight I was losing because I was like happy that I was going down one or two pounds here and there on the scale. So now I'm thinking, should I be happy at this point where I'm at right now that I'm not going down? Because if I were, that means I'm not actually doing what I set out to do, which is maintain my weight at 176. So that's why I'm tempted to just keep going because of knowing that last last time I did this, I dropped 20 pounds like, blah. I mean, like so fast and I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. And I didn't realize I was holding on to so much water. I think that's the key. So this time, I think I should be happy if I'm just maintaining between 180 and 183 for these three months. Because when I go to June, it'll probably drop back to 176 and it won't go drastically lower, right? That's where my brain is at right now. That's what I'm telling myself. You guys may not agree with me, but whatevs. It's my life. It's my body. I get to do what I want my channel. I get to talk about what I want. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's going to think I'm crazy, but I really, really think that I am doing this the right way for me. I really, really do. Or I wouldn't have done it this way. And that's why I'm tracking it and it's making it even more complicated, but I know it won't after a couple, like by next week, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a handle on my three meals that I like. That's what the crapshoot has been is trying to figure out the amounts of food per meal. To, that make me feel satiated, that give me a, th a second meal at the dance studio, which is what I really want. And I don't have any way to cook at the dance studio and I hate eating leftovers. So bars and nuts and things like that are the thing I'm going to eat at the dance studio. I already made that choice a long time before I started this. And then my regular meal would just basically my, my two meals are just cut down in portion size. And then I add in a little bit more fat calories with my third meal to try and balance that out. That's how I decided to do it. Now, after this three months, I may not lose and get back to 176 in June and be, oh man, that didn't work. I'm 180 still. Okay, well, back to the drawing board, okay? That's, I really want to, to give it the full try. Now, I could at this point, and I will consider this next week, I could do fat loss macros in April and see if that happens and see if I lose all that water weight and I really was the same weight. I could do that and then go back onto them in May. But I worry about doing too much of this. I really want to give my body a full break. Three months is a really good amount of time. It seems like three months on and one month of fat loss macros has worked really well for me last year. And it's kind of where I think my brain likes to be. I don't know how to explain that. I did do January and February and that was hard. Doing two in a row. Things are falling off my shelf. Creepy. All right. Let's just see if there's any more questions. I hope that helped. It didn't seem like it did. Um, I was drinking Monster in my tidbit. I, I switch around. Um, I like those big monsters because I can drink more of it for the same amount of caffeine. But yeah, obviously I still drink Bang since I have one here that I drank this morning. Um, I drink whatever I feel like drinking. There's also a brand new rock star that I haven't tried yet that Oliver, my son, that swears is the bomb.com that I haven't tried yet. It is one of their zero calorie bang knockoffs and it's like rainbow colored. So if you see that, he says it's really, really good, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, Teresa says he was, you were afraid he was going to, my Jasper was going to get his face pecked by those chickens. Me too. I thought he was going to lose an eye. You know what? He hasn't. They have not pecked him at all. Except when he was feeding the food. Oh, that wasn't in this Tammy's tidbits. If you watch the hide and seek that's going to go up as soon as I'm done here. Um, he was actually feeding them food. And he, they did kind of peck his hands then. But it didn't show that on the video. Because I didn't record when he said, Oh, they pecked me or they bit me. But he was laughing. He didn't care. Yesterday... He was out there doing it with no shirt on. My husband was freaking out. He had scratches all over his chest and he was laughing. And I'm like, Dave, you probably should have made him put a shirt on. 
The kid is nuts. What can I say? But he is such a boy. And I don't mind letting my boys just go out and do that kind of stuff. Just like I don't mind letting my boys get their fingernails painted. If you notice in every single video, he has fingernail polish because he's obsessed with it. I have no problem with any of that. I want them to just experience life and be full of the things that give them joy. And if holding a crazy chicken, getting whapped in the face gives him joy and he hasn't gotten pecked, whatevs. Let him do it. It's, I mean, he, it's just the best. I just, I never thought I would like chickens. Okay, I still don't love chickens. Frankly, when he's pulling, hauling them up by their tails, I, I try to care, but I don't care that much. Maybe that makes me a bad person, but they're, to me, they're just food. And they're cute and all, but they're not pets to me. But to him, they're pets. I don't know. All right, let's see. Oh, Rosie Osalis, there is an article um, about keto that Verta Health just put out on their blog that would totally convince your mom that it's that it's safe. It's all about that. If you missed it, you should go check it out because it's like um, basically a lot of science explaining why it's better for you and um, in the long run that it's sustainable. So, and it tells why. It's very detailed. So send that to your mom and just say, hey, mom, can you just read this? Because this is the reason why I'm doing this. She may not care still. She may not care still. Oh, my gosh, Jennifer. You're killing me. Jennifer Costa, you're coming to Low Carb Utah. Is that the thing that's April 26th and 27th? Please tell me it's not. If it's something else, I might be able to go. I can't go. And you're coming from North Carolina? Oh, I'm heartbroken. I can't go. I am actually pho photographing my kids' dance studio both of the days. But um, message me because maybe we could get together for dinner or something on Friday night. Or I don't know. Like maybe we could just meet, do a meet up. Because if you're coming clear from North Carolina, I would be sad if we didn't get to meet. So yeah, message me. Find me on Facebook and message me. Private message me and we can um, work it out. But yeah, I can't go. I'm so sad. I could maybe, like in my schedule, I could maybe go to KetoCon in Texas, but we looked at the pricing and we just can't do it because we can't afford to. We are, um, well, our kids have to come first and it sucks because it's on our anniversary weekend. And I'm like, dang it. I would really like to go to KetoCon with my husband on our anniversary, but we just can't make it happen because my daughter is graduating and she wants to go on a uh, coast, uh, coast, uh, Highway one, drive up the coast trip. And I promise that she's my first and probably only child to actually graduate high school because most of my kids are homeschooled and they don't graduate. <laughs> yeah, she's my only kid to go graduate. So she deserves something special. And so I'm going to send her and my um, soon to be 17 year old son. I don't want her to go alone on a road trip. And so I have to save my money for that. And we had to buy lagoon passes which are, which is our amusement park for the kids for all summer so that they don't realize they're not going on a vacation. And that took up like all of my extra fundage. So I can't even go to KetoCon in Texas. I wanted to for Keto Steve, but it, I just don't know how we could, it, yeah. I don't know. Got any ideas? I don't know, because I, I really want to go. It would be fun. So yeah, I'm not going, but I will make an effort to get together with you, even though I'm going to be really tired from photographing a bunch, a billion of dancers. And that is two days. <laughs> so message me. Um, keto and pregnancy and breastfeeding. That one is tricky. Uh, I've never done it myself. Well, that's not true. I did do it because I thought I was doing it to get my milk supply back because I thought that yeast was killing my milk supply, but it did not bring my milk supply back. If anything, it lowered my milk supply more and I ended up not being able to breastfeed Eloise, who is my eight year old. I actually used donor milk most of the time for her. I got breast milk from other people and I nursed her just for comfort um, twice a day. So for me, I wouldn't do it because I have really difficult time with supply. If you have an abundant supply, it's probably fine. But me, my supply was tenuous at best. And that's why I gained so much weight because I ate a ton of food when I was breastfeeding and I basically was breastfeeding for 22 years. I weaned Jasper last summer. <laughs> so 22 years breastfeeding without 
really a break. And the only time I ever had break was if I was pregnant and sometimes I was breastfeeding while I was pregnant. Most of my kids nursed till they were at least three. Most of them. Some of them are two. And one of them, my oldest, was almost six. Good grief. So, yeah, anyway. <sighs> it's tricky. You have to eat a lot more sodium. You have to eat a lot more fat. You can't do it the way I'm doing it. You have to do a lot more fat. So if you're going to do it, be careful. Be monitored by a doctor. Make sure your doctor's on board and all of that. All right. Let's see. Tammy Hinckley says, breaking your fast is really dependent on why you are fasting. If you're just keeping insulin down, you can do fat in your coffee. Most people can, can do the zero carb sweeteners. Okay. I, I, I'm not doing it for any reason other than just trying to keep my calories lower, I guess. I don't know. Um, is it good to drink water before yoga? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't even read that one out loud. Um, if you're having issues with, um, well, okay. <sighs> Are you on keto? If so, you could be having a water whoosh. It won't matter if you drink water or not. That's just a keto thing. Um, I don't necessarily recommend drinking a ton of water on keto. I would do sodium mixed with your water if you're going to do it. But I have a feeling this is this is not a real question. So I'm just moving on from that one. If it's a real question, you message me and we can talk about it. How's that? It's too, too crazy to talk about on here. Okay. Um, yes, my body is much different than last year. I do have less fat and more muscle. You can see, you can see I've only lost technically like 30 something pounds since the videos from this time last year, but I look dramatically different, dramatically different. I've lost a lot of sizes on my clothes too. Uh... The dance competition in Richfield was two weeks ago, Keto Grace. And I didn't go. Only Eloise went. Um, I don't usually go to the Richfield one. In fact, that's the vlog I'm putting up today is her going on that trip without me. Um, she goes with her duet partner. They do Richfield and St. George. And she gets to go with them. I don't go. I was thinking about maybe going next year, but I don't know. It just depends. My life is so crazy. It's so crazy. So I'm sorry if, if I missed you. Terry Lee says, what in the heck do I do with all of those eggs? <laughs> well, I eat one or two every single day. I feed a lot to my kids. Uh, let's see. Dave eats a lot of them. But we sell them. We actually sell them. I am selling them for... I think, let's see, it's $4 a dozen unless you replace the container, then it's three fifty dollars a dozen. I do, um, it's seven for, yeah, seven for an 18 pack or six, I can't remember. I have a price sheet. I don't know what they are, but we sell them. I make about 30 or 40 bucks a week selling the eggs. And if you, if you look at how much money I spend on food and you figure out, um, how much I make during the busy season. I only come out um, on the positive for about two or three hundred dollars, which is pretty decent actually for chickens. We got a really good deal on their food. Most of the time you come out even or it ends up costing you. Chickens are not cheap and making sure they have good food is not cheap. But luckily we found a place that's in Spanish Fork that sells food by the huge big bulk bin. And we buy food twice a year for about $300. So we spend about $600 a year on food. If you're buying it just from the local IFA, you're going to spend way more money. And the food's not as good. It's not as good. The stuff that we buy down at that place in Spanish Fork is insanely awesome. My chickens have, I mean, their feathers came in so full in the winter and they're just like fat. And their eggs are so yummy. Oh my gosh, you guys, the eggs are amazing. The yolks are huge and the shells are so thick you can hardly crack them. They are just, it's almost like eating candy. You make those boiled eggs, they're so good. I ate a whole plate of deviled eggs the other day just because they were so good. That was my second meal of the day one day as like six deviled eggs. 
Oh my gosh, it was a lot. So there you go. Um, yeah, Keto Grace, we should meet up. We're only two hours apart. Maybe we could do a meet up anyway. So yeah, message me. We'll figure it out. Um, Dr. Finney is awesome. Yes, Dr. Finney is my guru. He's the main doctor that I look to when I want to answer a question. So all the information that I give is generally Dr. Finney advice. Um, there are a lot of other great doctors out there. In fact, Dr. Barry is going to be here for that low carb Utah. And I am so sad I can't meet him. Dang it. I'm so sad about it. But I have, I mean, this is my, like I said, my busy season and I do dance portrait photography and that is the big one of my big studio weekends so there's no way I'm like I'm photographing from about three o'clock in the afternoon till nine o'clock on Friday though I do get a break for dinner so you might be able to work something out um Saturday I usually am done by four but I don't want to pay the money just to go for the evening you know what I mean like I don't know but maybe we could get together for dinner or something on Saturday or Sunday, if you're still here. So, yeah, let me know. All right, we're at time. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and go. I need to eat. And <laughs> I feel like we've talked about a lot of random stuff here. I hope that the, that the whole thing with the meal plan helped you guys out. Be sure to watch that video if you're really unclear about how to do that. Because I really go into it in depth. Ignore the advice about joining ketogenic dieters. Don't join ketogenic dieters. Join Keto Chaos instead. Still have a macros chart on there too. So yeah. I love you guys and all that and more. I don't know. Oh shoot. Sorry life is jewels. Hi and goodbye. But yeah, it's at the beginning. So go ahead and back and re and rewatch. Oh, and how many more pounds do I want to lose? I didn't see that. Uh I want to get to 27% body fat, which people here figured out would be between 160 and 163. So from yesterday's weight, that would be 20 pounds. Today I was back down to 180. So I need to be about 160-ish. I want to bounce between 160 and 165. And I think that's where I'll be pretty happy. Though who knows when I get there how I'll feel. That's where my current desire is. And so I was thinking if I could hold at 176-ish or mid 170s till June and then drop five, six pounds in June um, and then hold July and August and then drop again in or July, August and September and then drop again in, in October, then I could probably be pretty dang close to my goal by the end of October before I go on another break. So I usually like to do these three-month breaks. That's how I did it last year and it worked really great. So... Three month breaks from March to May and then a weight loss in June and then July to September and then a weight loss in October and then holidays and then weight loss January, February. So, and I may not do weight loss in January, February if I'm already at my goal. So there you go. <laughs> Unless I have a bunch of water weight from Christmas that I need to get rid of and then I'll do January and then go from there. Yeah, like I said, whole, whole maintenance thing is still a crapshoot for me, but... Guys, I'm going to get a handle on it for all of you. I know I am. And I'm going to be able to teach you guys about it because I'm going to figure it out. So this is just my first step on the way to doing that. All right. Thank you.